Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to discuss the benefits of using a small graphics tablet rather than a mouse, something I've been doing most of the time for over 20 years. As part of this video we're going to look at this, the latest small graphics tablet I purchased, which is a one by Wacom Small. But before we open up this box, let's run through some of the reasons you may choose to control your computer with a stylus rather than a trackpad or a mouse. So, why surrender some of your precious desk space to a graphics tablet? Well, one reason is that it provides more precise cursor control. This is particularly beneficial when using painting, drawing and other media applications or when annotating documents. And indeed, for a digital artist, a large graphics tablet can transform the creative experience. However, another key benefit is that a graphics tablet provides a more comfortable and natural user experience. And indeed, I think many of us who use a small graphics tablet do so primarily on ergonomic grounds, as it may avoid or lessen problems with RSI, arthritis and other pain that may result from or be aggravated by the long-term use of a mouse. When using a graphics tablet, the pointer is moved around by hovering the stylus above the active surface area, whilst clicking and double-clicking are usually achieved by tapping and double-tapping. Meanwhile, you select, drag, draw or write by moving the stylus when it's in contact with the tablet's active surface. Most tablets offer pressure sensitivity, and in some applications this allows the thickness or opacity of brush or pen strokes to depend on the level of pressure applied, which is something that cannot be achieved using a mouse. And, in addition, some tablets offer tilt sensitivity. The stylus also has buttons that are operated with the index finger and which usually can be configured to perform operations such as a double click, right click or scrolling. In addition, the stylus may have an eraser on the end and this can allow tool switching by rotating the pen, which is both handy and also ergonomically excellent for your hand. So, as we've seen, a graphics tablet, large or small, can offer a number of benefits. But what about the downsides? Well, getting used to a graphics tablet can involve a steep learning curve, as it's very different to controlling a computer with a mouse or trackpad. It could also be easier to scroll with a mouse wheel. And, in addition, a small graphics tablet may not be ideal for operating a computer with multiple monitors. And it's also an additional expense that will consume desk space if it doesn't replace a rodent and mat. Finally, it's worth noting that there may be operating system compatibility issues. For example, Windows 11 does not support some of the older tablets I use, although, as we'll see, they still have full driver support in Linux. Right. Having considered the theory, let's see what we get if we purchase a lower cost graphics tablet. So uh, here we have my new one by Wacom. And if you've not heard of them, Wacom are one of the industry leaders in graphics tablets with their hardware featuring a battery free stylus and having virtually no lag. The one by Wacom is currently the company's entry level model and comes in small and medium sizes with this one being the small. I purchased it for £35.99 from Amazon UK, with the price currently being $38.85 in the United States. So let's open it up. I'll bring in Stanley the knife. It looks like I just need to cut through a uh, seal down there. And then hopefully, if I've got this right, it will slide. It will slide. Oh, there we are, look. That can go down on the floor. And uh, there we are, right way up. And I presume this is now lifts oh it does i can get in straight away there we are my exciting new tablet and it's clearly this is the tablet itself that we can guess that and uh, does this just lift off that opens up like that i think and uh, does that get it out there must be a way to easily get it out surely it's stuck there we are look oh yes it's coming out and um 
there we are. Let's get rid of the, uh, the wrapper. And there we have the tablet. And it's a very straightforward piece of hardware. It's got the active surface on the top. It's got a little uh, pen holder, I think, on, on the side there. And it's got somewhere, there it is down here, there's a USB port which connects it to the computer. And as you probably notice, the other feature is on the back, it is bright red. And I don't know quite why this is, but it might be because if you ever get stranded on a railway line, you can use this to a signal train. Anyway, that probably isn't the reason, Chris, but you never know. But anyway, back in the box, we have also got the pen, stylus. Here it is, that's uh, as I would expect. We've got some documentation and we've got a, a USB lead for connecting to the computer. And then down here, if you're wondering what this is, let's put this down over here. And what this is, is a pack of three replacement nibs and a nib replacement tool. And forgive your close up at the end of the pen, we can see the nib and these do wear down over time. I get through one about every six to 12 months on my video editing PC. So it's good to have three replacement nibs included. The tablet itself is 210 by 146 by 8.7 millimeters. That's 8.7 by 5.3 by 0.3 inches. And it's got an active surface area indicated by the dots on the surface of 152 by 95 millimeters or six by 3.7 inches. Surface resolution is 2,540 lines per inch and the batteryless pen offers 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity. However, there's no tilt sensitivity and no eraser on the end, as we find, for example, on the pen from my Wacom Intuos 2, which I use to edit almost all of my Explaining Computers videos. Although these days the eraser on the end is only included on top of the range Wacom tablets. Finally, it's worth noting that Wacom provides drivers for Windows 7 and above Mac OS 10.10 or above, and Chrome OS 87 or above. And whilst they don't directly provide drivers for Linux, there is very good Linux support, as we'll see later in the video. But for now, let's get this up and running in Windows. Greetings, here I am back again. I've got the tablet plugged in to my i5 test rig, which is running Windows and no drivers have been installed. I've literally just plugged in a tablet and it does work as you can see, although it's working in what's called mouse mode. So we don't have absolute positioning here with the pen. If for example, I move the pen across to there, I'm on the edge of the screen here in Windows. I'm not on the edge of a tablet, which is over there. And similarly, if I move across to there, move my pen back over here, I can scout around the screen as we would with a mouse. So we haven't got direct correlation between the position of the pen and the position of the pointer on the display. So to make things work properly, we need to install a driver. So let's just go down here and do that. We're going to go to wacom.com forward slash start forward slash one. And if we just uh, scroll down here, it tells us what to do. We need to download a driver. Here's the Windows driver, we'll download that. And I'll just save it in my downloads folder. And there we are, our download is complete. Let's uh, click on it. There we are, we can run the Wacom extractor. And here we are installing the driver. So I'll just uh, click on through. There we are, it is finished and we need to restart now. And here we are back again. Oh look, it's moved some of my uh, icons around. That's nice of it. Let's put them back uh, in the right place over there. And here we are, Wacom wants to run things. I think we can skip all of this. I don't want to register my device. Uh, we want to turn off, turning on all the rubbish that Wacom's installed that we really don't need, but you can't sadly avoid. There we are. I think that's all of that. So that's going to all uh, go away. And we now go down to the Windows menu. And of course it's Windows 11. We have to search because, hey, why have a proper menu? It's only Windows, isn't it? And we can go into Wacom properties. We can close down again, all the drivel opening up in the background. And here's the actual properties panel. This is all we wanted to install, but Wacom installs, I'm afraid, various other things as well. And as we can see here, if we click on mapping, oh, go away Wacom, stop getting in the way. I've paid for this. Let me get on with using my own computer. Anyway, here as you can see, we're now mapped into pen mode. So if I move my uh, pen ac across the tablet back and forth, you can see it's actually mapped. And if I move across, you know, I, 
move across to there, it, it jumps around because there's now an absolute relationship between the pen and the pointer. Again, we go top of the screen, bottom of the screen. This is working as it should. We could go to mouse mode if we wanted to. That might be useful in some applications. If you do that, you generally have to turn off, I find anyway, mouse acceleration and turn the speed down considerably. But that would work if that's uh, what you want to do. And it's worth noting, you can set things for individual applications. So you can have some applications working in pen mode, some working in mouse mode. We'll also go across here to pen, where as you can see, we can set what the buttons do. We've got currently right click on the top and scroll on the bottom. I normally don't do that. I normally have right click on my bottom button and scroll. I can find it here on the top button, but you can do whatever you wish to do and that'll be okay. And a fun thing to note here is that currently we're on a computer with a single monitor and we've got the tablet mapped to the whole area. But if we were on a multi-monitor system like this, then by default, as we can see, the whole tablet area is mapped across both of the displays. Although if we wanted, we could select display toggle. We could set one of the buttons on the pen to a lever display toggle and we could then map the whole tablet area to a either display as we needed it. Oh, and the final thing to mention here is you might see that the system has turned on Windows Ink. If I go down to the taskbar, you'll see the Windows Ink thing is down there. I personally do not like Windows Ink. I'm going to turn it off. But this is, of course, a personal decision. You may be a great fan of Windows Ink. Now, here I am back again in the karma world of Linux, where I plugged in the one by Wacom and it just works. It's a properly map to the screen, as you can see, but I didn't have to install any drivers. It all just works straight out of the box. If we go, for example, to Critter, and I just do some strokes here that's going from thin to thick. You can see, hopefully, that pressure sensitivity is working no problems at all. And the reason this works is because of something called the Linux Wacom project, which makes sure that drivers for almost all Wacom tablets are pre-installed in most major Linux distros. And if we look at about here, we can see what's going on. We can see that of the uh, one, two, three, four, five people listed here as part of this uh, project of this community, four of them clearly work for Wacom. So Wacom clearly make big contributions to uh, making their devices work in Linux. And if we go to the menu here, we go to uh, preferences and we go down here to uh, graphics tablet, which will appear if you've got one plugged in. You can see we can set the pen as we could previously, you change its buttons and things. Not as much as we could change in Windows, but everything we need is here. We can also test things out down there. And as we can see, it knows it's a one by Wacom small. We could change the tracking from absolute to uh, being relative if we wanted to have a little mouse emulation if we wanted to. And the key message is that everything is basically here. If you're a Linux user, you should have no problems using a Wacom tablet. And indeed, this is also the case with Chrome OS which, as we can see on the Chrome OS Flex PC connected to my television, also has all of the required drivers and utilities for a Wacom tablet pre-installed. A graphics tablet is not something that everybody needs. But it is a peripheral that can transform your computing experience. And these days, there aren't many pieces of hardware that can do that. So, as somebody who normally picks up a stylus when booting up a desktop PC, I would encourage you to consider whether a graphics tablet may help you to use your computer more easily or comfortably. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.